Hello everyone, in this video I want to talk about uh, the effect of COVID-19 on India and also uh, on other parts of the world and how it's affecting all of us as a whole and uh, as we all know that uh, that uh, COVID-19 has posed some serious challenges to, uh, to all the major businesses in the world as well as on the governments of different countries. So there are measures, lockdown measures taken across different countries and there are many things which are being done currently uh, to tackle this issue. So um, there are two issues that I would like to uh, highlight here or I'd like to talk and put forth my opinions on it. So the first one is relating to the banking sector and it's purely based on the point of view of India. So um, RBI has announced, has recently announced a uh, COVID-19 regulatory packages uh, package. So according to this, um, you know, a person who has, a person is allowed to defer uh, or is allowed to defer interests or installments or EMIs, whichever. Uh, so for three months, for a period of three months, starting from March 1, 2020 to May 31, 2020. So if a person is unable to pay, he can def defer it and he can pay it after three months. So there, uh, there is a gap or an exception given for these for a period of three months. So uh, the thing is, and accordingly, his overall tenure will be extended. So uh, the thing is, uh, while opting for this you will i mean the person will have to uh, pay the interest accrued over the three months so uh, you have to pay the interest for the three months which you are taking as a exception or as a gap or whichever you want to call so um so i find two problems with this uh, with this policy or with this package with the rbi has uh, which the rbi has introduced so the first is uh, based on the point of view of people so um the thing is uh, for the three months which you are not paying your installments you uh, the interest will be accrued so you will have to pay extra money or uh, of interest for that particular period and uh, according to me uh, people who are able to pay and who know this process well so they would not uh, you know take that gap so they would keep paying uh, as and when they get the money so if the person is really having money so he'll pay paid um, like most of them will um, so the people who will defer are the ones who are not able to uh, you know provide that money so who are uh, not a who don't have that type of money uh, in the current situation so such people they'll have to pay extra money uh, up when they start paying the installments again so um, what I would like to so I my thought on this is that uh, is it really uh, you know is it really a kind of help which is given so we have to think on that and the second is from the point of view of banks so uh, here um, the lender so so the lender the banks uh, will fear that if a large amount of uh, uh, if the large number of borrowers uh, actually decide to defer so actually require that type of uh, refuse uh, the service loans that refuse to service these loans that is they refuse to pay those installments so uh, then the rbi's measure to soften the entire you know process or the blow from the covid-19 situation will uh, will you know it will uh, fail to serve its purpose so um, if if this moratorium on interest or uh, slash installment payments is uh, taken up by people and if it's chosen by people and uh, if let's say a 50% of people start deferring their loans so uh, for a bank which is giving out loans as worth as much as 2 lakh crores or 6 lakh crores or so if 50% start 50% of the people start to defer that then there is a huge amount which the bank will not be getting and uh, in such situation the bank will banks will not have uh, that enough money to infuse liquidity into the um, market you know which which actually is the main reason behind uh, the entire you know rbi's regulatory packages uh, so I think that would not serve the purpose. So, uh, 
and also RBI has provided to 20,000 uh, crores rupees to individual banks to uh, you know tackle such situations but then will that money be enough so if the number of uh, if you know if the amount uh, which sums up the, to be the deferred um, you know installments or uh, interest payments or EMIs if that amount is actually much you know, you know is much higher than that 20,000 so the then banks will be suffering uh, uh, the consequences so uh, and another thing thing is uh, um, many people have you know are on a gap of three months uh, on you know until there is lockdown and it doesn't start working normally so people are, will not be getting their money if it's whether it's one month or three months or whatever um, period it is so at such times people will need money to fulfill their ba uh, daily requirements so they will be taking out money from those deposited money so by the end of all this banks will have lesser money to infuse the liquidity which they are actually expecting so what can be done in situ such situations is that uh, uh, government employees who are being paid currently you know they can be exempted uh, from this uh, from the benefits of this regulatory package of covid-19 uh, by rbi uh, and also the bigger companies which can actually manage the situation i think they can also be exempted or something similar i mean yeah of course rbi is much uh, equipped to you know come up with ideas yes uh, so i think something of that sort can be done and the next thing next big issue which i feel might result into a bigger disaster is something related to the food supply chain or the agriculture industry or the food industry um, whichever name uh, suits the better so uh, the thing is this problem is not just faced by India uh, it's it is it will be faced by the entire world of course India is facing uh, like India will also be uh, facing a lot of difficulties if there is a problem in the food supply chain um, but then it will become a world problem if we are not able to manage it properly. So uh, the Trade Promotion Council of India has uh, recently reported that there has been uh, over 100% uh, increase, uh, rise in the demand for the uh, for the essential commodities like rice, wheat and, wheat and pulses, and there has been over 20% like 15 to 20% hike uh, spike in the uh, demand for uh, other food items so uh, and this report uh, this was reported in march in the month of march so uh, of course april and the preceding months might have a bigger impact if the number of cases keep increasing as it is happening uh, starting from april 1 if they keep increasing at that pace then i think it will be difficult uh, like we might be uh, you know we might be moving towards much difficult situations so uh, in such situation if the demand keeps increasing and when countries are not able to export and import uh, the food items as they had been doing because of you know various norms uh, which need um, like various norms uh, for this particular industries uh, which have to be met by the exporters or uh, delaying in payments because of uh, you know banks working towards various other problems and the countries being closed um, and also um, uh, because of you know problems with transportation and logistics uh, so uh, that and also since the other sectors are closed say let's say the manufacturing sector which is uh, currently on a halt so uh, with such situations when the containers the packages uh, and things like that are not being uh, you know uh, supplied to that extent and when exporters are not able to export to that extent the problem which will arise will be the shortage in food so uh, so it might so happen that people who have enough money might be able to survive such situations but if the prices of the food go high then uh, the poor uh, people or the people in the lower strata of the society might not able to survive this blow so I think the government also needs to think about uh, uh, how to uh, tackle such situations or what can be done uh, how to you know if, if at all the economy goes to such situation how to tackle this so I think uh, the governments across the countries the different governments from the world have to come together and they have to think a solution for this as well 
so these are the things which our economy is facing currently and i think agriculture and banks uh, agriculture industry and the banking uh, sector these two uh, will play a very big role in any country in the situation of this pandemic uh, pandemic disease corona covid 19 playing its uh, you know uh, affecting the regions and uh, and so on so uh, in such difficult times i think countries have to come up together and think solution how to keep this financial uh, sector as well as the agri industry or the food supply chain uh, how to manage that and move ahead yeah so that's it from my side thank you very much